You're here because you want to know the true cost of a do-it-yourself hydroponic system. <laughs> the real question you should be asking is what is the value of a DIY hydroponic system? And we're going to explore both of those questions tonight as we are in session number six of the Get Growing free hydroponics training online. This is what we've been waiting for. It's the last session. So yes, it is harvest time. It is harvest time. Now, we have been through this journey with Carol and Melissa and they'll share some of the things at the end and we'll be checking back with them later because they had a restart. After the More About Seeds, they've had a restart. They're having success and I will add pictures <laughs> of their recent successes with their seeds and we're going to revisit them and how they're doing in their do-it-yourself tanks with in their dwc tanks i don't know if you're looking but we have to harvest <laughs> because these have exploded <laughs> they have exploded and uh so <laughs> We're going to harvest those in a minute. I want to address the question, how much is it? And I had not sat down in the last couple of years because I've been so happy with my growing produce hydroponically that I hadn't really thought about it. So I sat down and I put the pencil to paper and I'll put the details of that in the description and in a, in a box on the video. But let's, this is, counting the electricity, the seeds, and the nutrient that we need, this tank is $1.51 a pound. I did the research on every store I could find to find what they are calling living lettuce. They call it living lettuce. That means the lettuce has roots still attached to it. I'll do a side note on roots that doesn't matter. I don't leave roots, but some people like roots looking on them. That doesn't make it last longer being in a head does, but having the root does not. But let's just say, and, and to start up, to start this up, the lighting, the uh, to buy the lights, to get the tank, to have the pump, tubing and an air stone to start up is less than $100. So that means this is a dollar and 51 cents a pound for the same kind of lettuce at the store. I found lettuce that looked like this organic green butter lettuce and it said $3 a container. So I thought, well, that's great. It must be a huge container. It was $3 for three ounces. That's yeah. how much an ounce, one dollar. That means it is for a store bought version of what we have, it is $16 a pound. Now, but wait, <laughs> there's more because when you grow something hydroponically, it lasts because you take it straight out of the tank you harvest it. I'm going to take this harvest. I'm going to finish harvesting tonight and I'm going to have lettuce. I'm going to have lettuce immediately. I can go in and I can just eat it. <laughs> the lettuce you are buying from the store is not, it can't be that fresh. It can't be. It literally can't be because you didn't immediately come from where it was harvested. Let's just say though, my lettuce I think it lasts twice as long. I've seen that it lasts twice as long, but let's just say it lasts 1.75 times as long. That makes the store-bought lettuce now cost $28 a pound versus mine grown hydroponically. I know every step of the way, it has a, a, a $1.51 a pound. I started doing some math though. And I thought, all right, how much do I eat? How often would I eat lettuce? Well, if I grow it hydroponically, I can grow 
year round. It doesn't matter what the weather is. It doesn't matter how cold or how hot. It doesn't matter about, uh, I, I don't have to worry about pests and I can grow it year round. That means this container of, this hydroponics has eight heads and this tank has a value of $1,272 minus $72 to grow the monthly and the poundage. And then I started looking at my shelves. <laughs> I have four tanks, two shelves with four tanks, that's eight shelves. And I started thinking, I'm making money. <laughs> I'm making money because in actuality, it is worth $10,000 a year. $10,000 a year for these, for an initial investment of less than $100 and $1.51 a pound. That to me, that's the value of a do-it-yourself hydroponic system. Any thoughts on that, Carol or Melissa? I, I realized that I, I, I never put the pencil to the paper, but I figured it was well worth it. I mean, I, I realize I understand what it costs to grow things and what it costs to buy things, but I would never have guessed it at that price. Thank you, Carol. It's, it's pretty amazing. And for me, I'm, I eat a lot of lettuce. I eat, I eat a big salad every day. So I purchase a lot of lettuce. And one of my least favorite things about that is when you buy like the, the big ones, you know, the value ones, by the time you get to the bottom, it starts to, you know, decay a bit and then it ruins the lettuce and you don't even get to eat the lettuce that you paid for and that's that's something I really just like <laughs> so thank you Melissa and I did too and that's what happened to me and then something else that I realized is I started looking at the spring mix are you buying the spring mix because the spring mix isn't $28 a pound however it's not all lettuce it's other items that you might not have wanted not that you didn't want a different species that, that you didn't want a different and, and, and those are wonderful and I grow different ones, but exactly, you want what you, you want the value of what you're putting in and the effort. And that clearly shows it. So now that we have our figures <laughs> that talk about the true cost and the true value of a do-it-yourself hydroponic system, let's now talk about harvesting. And I'm going to give you a few tips. First tip. The first tip is that you need a pair of shears that are allocated for just hydroponics. And it doesn't have to be, these are kitchen shears, but you can use other shears, you can use scissors. I just tell people to make sure that what it's used for is hydroponics. Designate that, my kitchen shears come apart so I can put them in the dishwasher and that just makes it a little bit easier for me. Wash these after every harvest wash these when they've been used. Another thing that I would do is I would make sure that, that, that there are assigned tubs and bowls and things that say, I don't know if you can read, <laughs> but it says hydro for food only because I came home one day and the dog was being washed in my tub. And I said, that is not the dog's. <laughs> <laughs> and then my son was using one of my other tubs for his tennis shoes. And I said, oh, only. <laughs> and I didn't put it, you know, I, I just underlined and I, I, I thought, I also have bowls that are just for hydroponics, not used for anything else. Even if you get what, what, it doesn't have to be expensive, but they do need to be allocated for your hydroponics so that you don't have to be concerned about any type of germs, dirt, anything that could be introduced into your hydroponic system. Another tip, tip number two, that was just tip number one, assigning items. Tip number two for harvesting, 
because you're going to be doing a lot of harvesting in the future. Purchase a tub, the same, an extra one, the same size, could be not as shallow for the, the extra one, but purchase an extra tub that is the same size as the tub you're going to be harvesting. What I have found, and, it, and, and you want your tubs to be lower profile. What I have found is that we used to carry in, I used to carry in the, the, the tubs and I would, I would have water everywhere. <laughs> and it was just, it was more difficult. And it's, and it's much easier to do something called cut and come again. And we'll be doing that. We're going to be doing, there's two types of harvesting of lettuce. There is a single cut head of, head of lettuce lettuce head harvesting, and then there's cut and come again. And people who grow in home, usually the commercials grower, commercial growers are single cut head of lettuce. When you grow at home, you're more cut and come again. Here's another item. This is an old towel. It is going on the floor so that I do not do something that my children called stretching. Mom, are you stretching? <laughs> no, I was really sliding on the floor. I just told them that it was stretching. <laughs> you won't ever intend to spill nutrient, but sometimes you might. Tip number four. Tip number four. Have containers nearby for putting in. This is compost. This is yellow, so I know compost. I got the, when I have compost. I just put it in there. I have another container for the trash. So I have those close by so that I don't have to leave this area. Now today, when I am harvesting for the cut, when I'm doing the, the cut and come again and showing you that, I'm going to be using a smaller bowl and a clear bowl just so you can see what I'm doing. You can use, tip number five, you can use a vegetable wash if you want. And I, used to use a vegetable wash on produce I purchased at the store because have you ever heard the warnings of what happens in sometimes in produce because some produce is grown where the irrigation is untreated sewage. And that's how E. coli is introduced into produce. Not here. <laughs> However, if you want to wash it. You don't need a commercial. You can do a DIY. One part vinegar, three parts water. And I was concerned, will it taste like the vinegar? No, it does not taste like the vinegar. It simply, you, you can, but you can rinse off the vinegar and there is no flavor residue. However, everywhere I researched in for myself, a couple of rinsings is absolutely perfect and will do. The next tip, use gloves. Use gloves so that when you are harvesting, you don't have to worry about going and washing your hands. You just simply are able to continue harvesting. So I'm going to put those on now. And I will put the tips, all of those tips will be in the description down below the video. All those tips will be in there and they'll also be on hydroforfood.com. Let's get started. And I, well, I have to tell you that this is our, it's our $1,200 a month tank. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> wow, that's if, amazing. <laughs> wow. If you if you were some of my science and math students, we would not just be moving into harvest at this point. We would be measuring the difference in the roots. We would be looking at the I can see already, you can see from the roots there's one that doesn't have a really good root system. And it's hidden amongst the ones that do. But as a student, you might want to know how do, why did that happen? We would be looking, we would be measuring circumference. We would be comparing the circumference. We would be measuring the length of the roots. 
we would be measuring the length of leaves, the, the length of the interior leaves. All of those things could be done. Now let's talk I, about, yes. I never thought about, I wouldn't have thought about the math part of it, but when you uh, carried that over, I was like, ah, the towel, smart. Because I was like, how do you spill the nutrient? But now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and one of the reasons, every single part of hydroponics is science and math and technology. We're using all of it. We're using all of it. And I know one school who actually was using the engineering part of it and were riding bicycles to keep their lights going. <laughs> so let's take and let's do a single head. Here's how you do it. A single cut head. You take, and I'm going to move this tub off. You can see the healthy roots. And let's just, I'm just curious. Over a foot long, over a foot long. Now those healthy roots, I don't want to leave those on. So I'm simply going to remove them. I'm then going to take and I'm going to, and I have Lika and I'm going to take and you'll see the seeding media. You'll see the seeding media underneath. You'll see the seeding media. And I'm going to take the seeding media and I'm going to gently break it off. Now, this one is a little bit clinging to the stem. So what I'm going to do is take and cut from the bottom. And you look and you can see. Now you can see that there are a few leaves that are not ones that I would want to eat. So I'm just going well, to take I'm those. Sorry. Is that the rock wool that you cut off? The seeding media? Yeah. That's the rock. That's the seeding media. Mm -hmm. That's from day one. Yeah. Yes. This was what it was. Here, let me. Seeded in. Yeah. Yes. This is what it was seeded in. I even have the, uh, the, the tag for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And do you see on the bottom? So I'm going to take and I'm going to keep the lettuce head. I'm going to keep the portion of that that will keep it producing. But I'm going to I'm going to remove the ones that I don't really want. And this is often this method I actually learned from a person who is an organic farmer, uses all organic, and he keeps these in, he keeps his lettuce in heads because he sells them that way at the market. And you can keep your lettuce in heads when you, after you harvest. So one of the things that you're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it in. This is a container. It's just a bucket, a five gallon bucket of clean water. It's all I use is for washing anything that comes out of harvest. And I'm going to dunk it, swish it, And I'm going to dunk it the other way. And then I'm going to turn. And then I'm going to take, and this is my fancy, if I was a commercial grower, I would have a fancy screen. <laughs> my screen is also known as a cooling rack. And I'm going to let my head of lettuce drip. I think they stay fresher when you leave the head intact as well. Like when I yeah. buy from the store, if I buy the head of lettuce from the hydroponically grown, it, it stays longer. Yes, and and what uh, and, you know we and we didn't even we didn't even get into the taste of, of the taste difference mm -hmm. and what is the value of taste. But yes, those those do last longer if you keep the head intact. And in fact, what they do after you after he drips up a little bit. And you can always assign, make paper towels, make paper towels that are, I'm just gonna let that one dry a little bit. <laughs> make a set of paper towels that are just for hydroponics. I have a set of towels just for hydroponics so that I don't have to worry 
who's used this for what, I know that I am using what is clean. So I'm just gonna dry this up a little bit with the clean paper towel. And I'm gonna show you what some people do. You can use a Debbie Meyer green bag. These will keep the lettuce fresher longer. I have seen this extend up to an additional week to week and a half. So I use these, you can use these for heads. Sometimes the first one I showed you when we first started back on January 30th, it was four weeks old. So, but you can take a clean bag. This is just a clean bag. And I simply turn it inside out. You turn it inside, you just reach in. You take and you grip the lettuce. And you turn. And if you were showing this in a farmer's market, this is how you leave it. <laughs> so people know what they're buying. If it's you at home, you can simply seal it up, twist it, keeps everything from being damaged. That is single cut lettuce head harvesting. Do you buy those bags online or where do you get the that clean? Is actually, oh, the green ones, it's on my website. Oh, I know the green Hydro ones, but this one. Oh, these are red. You know what they are? I get these from a uh, discount store, uh, any of the Costco or Sam's. It's what they line trash cans with, but they're clean. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, I have a role that all I use it for is my produce. Perfect. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you can buy the more expensive ones, but where I can save a few pennies, that buys me, as Melissa and, and, and Carol and I say, it would buy us more seeds. We, we like seeds. <laughs> we like seeds. And I want that. The, buy to the single cut, beautiful head of lettuce. And let's go to the other type of harvesting. And that is called cut and come again. And in the cut and come again, what you are going to do is literally what the name says. You are going to cut and you're going to come again. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, I was hungry this week for a taco salad. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have any lettuce and I knew my lettuce was coming and I thought I'm not buying any of that lettuce because it doesn't taste as good and I have two shelves of lettuce one shelf that's ready to harvest and another one that's coming and I thought I'm not doing it so I snuck out and I don't know if you can see there's a little blank space in this one because um I've already cut on this one <laughs> and you might be thinking, oh, Gwenna, that's not a pretty head of lettuce. It is a gorgeous head of lettuce because I am going to, I have taken off the bottom. I'm going to leave. I took the, the, the bottom part off. I am leading, leaving where it is attached and growing, leaving that attached. I'm leaving it in the Lika. And in two weeks, I'll post a picture of it in two weeks. It will look just like it did to before I cut it. Wow, that's pretty neat. <laughs> I've done this. I have done cut and come again three times in a row. And it really this is, and some people do this, they go out and just pull off the leaves they need. You don't have to harvest all at once. You can just go out and I did that. I also, there's a starfighter up there I believe it's, where did I put it? Oh, this is the sad starfighter. No, there was one that was right up here. I don't, oh, it's in the back. Oh, um, every time we were eating sandwiches, I went and took one of the leaves off. <laughs> oh, I, I had a nice lot. Yes, go ahead. Um, in, in my raised beds, we do that as well. And I get them before they may be diseased from, uh, well, dirt, mostly or watering and does that I mean I know when you did the the whole head lettuce the bottom leaves were yellow but when you do that and there's that much space does it keep the 
bottom layer from maybe going yes. back. Yes, yes, yes. So it it's really advantageous in a few ways. You, you get it right away. Actually, I did that tonight. We had tacos and I went to my bed and got, but I took, as long as they're not yellow, but that's good to know that it takes away the opportunity for that one to be a little yellow at some point. Yes, and, and then it adds to the value. Yes. So the, the, so the true cost, it, and it's just, and that's why you want your, when you have your hydroponics and it's home base, it's typically nearby. <laughs> So you can go out and do that. That's why you want it. I mean, the, just the convenience of it. So let's look at, at cut and come again, how you would do it. Because it's, I thought I have to be really careful and I, you know, that, let's just look, I'm going to take and turn on my scale because I want to know how much, how much I've, um, and I'm gonna put this on. It is 4.9 ounces and I'm gonna zero it out. So we're just going to see I'm going to take, and I'm going to take one of these green butter. And I am, you don't have to be as fancy. I don't know if you watched, but I did. All I did was stick my fingers into the bottom. I have one, one I'm not going to keep. I put it in the not keep. And then I'm going around and I'm simply if I had, your Carol's exactly right. If I had harvested sooner, instead of waiting till the till every every head and and to our timing, I might have gotten a few more leaves. But all I'm doing is lifting up and taking from the bottom. I'm lifting up and taking from the bottom. And what you're going to end up doing, and let's just see. I'm going to now. You can use shears if you want. If you want to use shears. That is not, it, that won't harm anything. And let me show you. Now you see, it was easier. Now, once I raise it out like this, I'm going to show you what I'm doing, but it's much easier to place it in the tank and then you can turn it when you're ready to go to the other head. I found that as well, that it was just easier. And then I just, when I finished, I just simply laid it over and put it back in the hole and it was ready to grow me some more lettuce leaves. I'm going around. And what you want is to leave the inner leaves, leave the inner leaves so that it continues to grow. On this one, I lost three leaves. Otherwise, I'm going to take this one. And this one seems to want to come out too. So there we go. I can take, I think I'm going to take two more. Because I seem to be laying over. It's a little addictive though. You want to keep taking them. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I have, well, at first, the first few times I did cut and come again, I probably did not take enough because I was afraid I'll take it all as long as there is are some some leaves left in the center, you're, you'll you'll be okay. You, now, you can do that with other vegetables, spinach as well, so. Perfect, yes, yes, because it's a, a leafy green, yes. Correct. Now, let's see how much we have. Let's see how much. It is 2.6 ounces. Yes. Just what we took off was 2.6 ounces. Nice. Just from one, just from one, one of them. <laughs> That's a nice size salad right there. It is. It, it, yes. And if you were nearby, I would hand it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I mean, I'm. These starfighters. Wow. These are, these <laughs> are. I have found packages of these for uh, $3 for six leaves of lettuce because they're, they are so good on sandwiches. They actually cover the entire, uh, the entire bun or the entire bread. And uh, the other night, that's why I came out, we were having hamburgers and, and I asked my husband, I said, does it taste different than it did before? And he said, uh-huh <laughs> because we could tell that <laughs> we had fresh 
recently harvested lettuce. That's just what you have there is just from two plants, right? Yes, and all I've done is taken the bottom leaf. That's all I've done, and I haven't taken all the bottom leaf. Here's some more. Yeah. Yeah. Bottom leaves from two. And Starfighter, Starfighter, you have to, it, it does much better if you take the, the longest, the oldest leaves off. It does better, but it, I don't have a lot left for it, and it will grow very, very well. I'm now up to five ounces, and all I did was just add a little bit of the Starfighter. I still have two-thirds of a tank left to harvest. Now you know, and you can take and put, you'll rinse it, rinse it, use the, the DIY one part vinegar, three parts water. You can rinse it, but you can rinse it a couple of times in cold water. I then take mine and I put it in, uh, I try to get cold water. So I may put ice in the water, but I like cold water because it just, it hydrates it. And then I take it and, uh, I ended up, the more I used hydroponics and the more I harvested, the more I needed a, a salad spinner. And this one is just fun because you mash and it. Glenna, when you put them in the bag, do you put a paper towel in there with them or not? I do, I dry them off. You don't have to but I know that a lot of people recommend that. And they even recommend when you buy something from a store. When we were in transition to our property here in Central Texas, we actually, when we bought something organic at the store, we brought it home and rinsed it and then spun it and then patted it dry with a paper towel. Again, I, I your always, clean paper towel. I find it works better with a paper towel, but I did not know since those bags were specifically made for um, no, it, it won't. It it doesn't really matter, but okay. but it's yeah. Okay. And then the the spinner usually gets most of it, and then you, I just set it out on a paper towel, and then turn another paper towel on top of it, and then I put it in the bag. The containers, if you can find these, these are good too. And as a side note, they also keep food uh, baked goods longer. Is that the That's same? We'll be. Debbie okay. Meyer. Okay. Debbie Meyer. I think it's on your website, right? It is. It's on the Hydro for Food, Hydroponics for Food resources, but on the Hydro for Food resource page. We harvested. And these are my, I, I have to tell you <laughs> that these are my hydro, they, these people have been with me Carol and Melissa have been with me and have been persistent and they are passionate about growing their own food. What would you say if, if, you, if someone was considering growing hydroponically, if someone said, ah, oh, I don't know, if someone was considering growing hydroponically, what would you tell them? Carol, what would you say? Well, they just will not believe the difference in the taste for one thing. People do not understand. And it, it, what always bothers me, I don't know if I've already said this because I say it a lot, um, like institutional food, no wonder children don't eat that, you know? I mean, but grown organically and in your own care and you see what you're feeding yourselves, your family, there's a world of difference in taste. I can understand why people don't say, like, I don't like lettuce or I don't like salads. Well, they've never had a homegrown or hydroponically organic salad, I can tell you. I've, I've had a large bag of your lettuce and I still remember the taste. It's, there's even buying organic food at the store, it's still better. There's nothing compares to either your outdoor garden or your hydroponic food and what I I I like cilantro and you and I like basil you can't grow those all year long outside so I'm looking forward to being successful in growing some herbs that it's either too cold or too hot to grow because I like them all year long like I would think everybody does 
and especially the salad, it'll make you eat more salads. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> I thank you because that's a testament to it. And I would say to people, it if you're concerned about the cost, it's a little bit of time, a little bit of money, some patience, some persistence, and then you get to eat it. <laughs> well, Melissa, what would you tell? Go ahead, so Carol. I'd like Talking about the, the cost, well, look at how much lettuce you have just from two, and you didn't take the whole thing. You took the bottom leaves. That that would feed a family, you know? Yes. yes. And, it's, and it's the green, it's the type of, there. there's where the nutrition is. And one of the reasons why I want to share how to, to make hydroponics simple is so that people who don't have a place to grow it can grow it indoors, that they can have their own food that is good for them. Melissa, what would you tell someone if, they, if someone said, if someone came up to you and said, ah, I don't know, what about, what, what about this hydroponics? I, I saw you online. What, what, what's the, you know, what would you respond? Well, I would say it's just such an amazing thing to grow something from a seed and have it nourish you. And, and if you, and if you have kids or, you know, grandkids or something, taking them along on that journey and, and showing them all of the steps, like I, I really enjoyed that with my kids and this teaching them and having them check every morning and get excited <laughs> when we started getting the real leaves for the first time and, and, you know, just going, going through that whole process. And I have to say that I am amazed. Like I've been looking at your lettuce every week, but I am amazed by how much you got out of just two of those little heads. Like, I cannot believe that. That is, that is, I was very surprised. That's amazing. <laughs> and it's deceptive when you, when you say per pound. That's deceptive yeah. because it's lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> but you, so but yes, you're right. You don't, you wouldn't think it. And that's why the DWC, the, the tanks that you and Carol have can produce enough and, and do a fantastic job. We just, you know, have done an expanded system. We will be checking back with you. Uh, and seeing how you're progressing. We'll have some of that on the Glenda Tabor YouTube channel. If you like what you saw, then subscribe to the Glenda Tabor YouTube channel because there's going to be more hydroponics. And give it a thumbs up <laughs> and comment. You found a way that works. We want to know about it. I don't know everything about how to grow food. I don't know how everything about how to grow food hydroponically, but I am passionate about being just expecting self-rescue that if they're if the grocery stores if trucks can't come i have to the grocery stores the shelves are going to be wiped out within three to four days i want to know that my family and i can not only survive but we can thrive and uh, the last thank you my hydroponic, my honorable hydroponic farmers who've been on the journey with me. And I wanted to thank you who are watching in this Get Growing Free Hydroponics Training Online. The last thing I want to tell you is, oh, let's see, a green butter. Let us go eat. Thank you, Glenna. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>